in the Lottie Woods store that are here. Today we are going to be showing you how to turn this nice piece that we have here from American Tourister. And we are going to be showing you how we turn this into this countertop pattern with our logo on the front. So this case is our mobile showroom. We are going to be using it to go on the road a lot. We're going to be using it to show to clients and stuff. By our estimates, it should fit around 20 or so sample boards packed inside it using that method that we've shown before of the collapsible sample boards into each other. So this is our mobile showroom. This is a portable case that we coated over so that way we can just put all the sample boards into it and we can have it on the go. It's just very easy to carry and roll around and we'll be showing you how to make it in this video. So let's get started. So, first, we have our tag here, cutting it off, which means from this point, there is, so to speak, no return in this. So I open the case and do the discovery. This fabric here, if we want to get this off, we're going to have to, uh, possibly break through this fabric. See, we have these bumps here. You can feel stuff underneath here too, but might come up through there and not be just something that we can pop off. We we'll want to make sure that we get their logo off here. We we'll want to pop that off. I found a zipper that can help expose the guts on the inside. The fabric covers turned out to be sticky felt pads covering the screws, so I scraped those off. After the felt pads are removed, we got at the screws and I started unscrewing all the wheels from the inside. The logo was held in place more firmly than just with adhesive. There were two metal clips that held the logo in the back. I moved those off and the logos popped right off. I also removed the handles, but I made sure to keep the collapsible handle in place. I will just mask over that one so I don't epoxy over it. As I disassembled the case, I kept all the hardware from each half of the case on a separate side so it would be easier to put everything back together afterwards. The biggest time spent for this project was in all the prep work, disassembling everything and then masking off the parts I didn't want to epoxy. Once this is all done, the last step will go pretty quickly. In preparation to Bondo, the divot left behind by the logo, I am masking off the inside of the case with Gorilla Tape where the clips were before so the Bondo will be able to dry on the surface and the tape will provide a sturdy backing for it. To mask off everything else, as we put pieces of tape there, we trace the outline of the specific parts we are masking off so we do not mask off any more than is absolutely necessary for a crisp finish. And then we cut out around the outline with a contractor's knife or an X-Acto knife.
After opening the can and recovering from the smell, I mixed up a batch of Bondo that I am applying to the case here. This one we had to do in a couple of passes. Add the first layer and let it dry, then add another layer. I then painted the case with two coats of gallery white, and I'm now mixing the epoxy. Here's a recipe for the classic white quartz. Start with a bare paint and primer in one gallery white. Then, once it is dry, we mix our epoxy with some silver glitter and some white glitter inside. We add a small amount of silver and pearl mica flakes into the mix, however we will grab and sprinkle more mica flakes directly onto the case itself afterwards. By the way, mica flakes are made out of a rock called mica, and what that is is a sort of mineral-based rock that when ground up into a fine powder can make beautiful, reflective additive that you usually find in your metallics. You can find these in metallics for epoxy, or they can even be found in makeup. What the mica flakes are, are just the larger chunk sheet form of that rock. We are now troweling out the epoxy on our case. Be careful of the edges, they are regularly shaped, and on the front side of the case, the epoxy can really just roll off. We then chop out our epoxy as usual, and here, in order to get our mica flakes distributed evenly and in a nice pattern, I just tossed a slight pinch at a time on the sides where I wanted them. For the logo, we cut out our pattern on a piece of adhesive black vinyl using a Cricut machine. In order to get the sticker to line up better than you could manually, we just picked out all the lettering from the sticker, then stuck a piece of painter's tape onto the logo. This allows it to transfer easily. I then stuck it onto the case, and here I am removing the painter's tape. I then add a clear coat of epoxy over everything. After it dries, we go over it with an X-Acto knife and cut free all of the painter's tape. Note on the second layer how the case is properly elevated from the table. We didn't do that on the first layer, and you really need to do that in order to keep the zipper intact and functional. Also, you need to make sure that the zipper is nicely taped off so the epoxy just rolls off the sides. So this was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a bit of a problem with the zipper and we show you in the video how to properly tape it off and to elevate it so that the epoxy doesn't get on it like it did with us. So we just went to Home Depot and got these glasses really quickly. It was just heads up, uh, but it does fit a lot of same parts here nicely. another product that we can make. So if you liked the video, go ahead and comment on it and make sure to share, like, and subscribe. It always helps us out. And from all of us here at Synthetic, built by you, built for less, built to last, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.